All right, what's up, what's up everyone? In this video, I'm gonna be talking about the exciting updates today from Anthropic releasing Claude 4, uh, Opus, and uh, Claude Sonnet 4. So a lot of very exciting updates. Let's go ahead and dive into it. Go subscribe to our channel. All right, so I'll link the uh, full announcement blog post down below, but they launched this today. So we have the next generation of the Claude models. So Claude Opus 4, Opus is their most advanced uh, model, and then we have Claude Sonnet 4, uh, which is great for like advanced reasoning, coding, and also plugging into some AI agent applications. Uh, Opus 4 is now the world's best coding model uh, with sustained performance on a lot of these long running, running tasks and also AI agent workflows. There's also a few other announcements in addition to the model releases here is now they have extended thinking with tool use. Now this is in beta, but essentially what that, that means is both models will be able to use the tools like web search during extended thinking. So it allows the uh, Claude chat experience to alternate between the reasoning and the web search tool to improve the responses. So it can go out you would put in a prompt, it will go search things, it will do reasoning, uh, search things again. So it's almost like how we behave as humans, kind of thinking and processing information and taking action on that, which is again, more of like an AI agentic um, application. Also, there are new model capabilities here. So the new, the uh, updated models can now use tools in parallel. So they'll actually be able to follow instructions more precisely. Uh, when given access to local files by the developers. So it can significantly, uh, significantly handle a lot of these improvements on memory capabilities, extracting a lot of information and saving key facts to maintain that continuity uh, with some of the knowledge over time, which has been one of the uh, unfortunately negative experiences I've had with Claude uh, is it doesn't have uh, that long-term knowledge over time. Also, Claude code is generally available. So there is a lot of uh, people using Claude code on the development side. So now that is readily available for everyone to use. It will also support background tasks via GitHub Actions and also native integrations within VS Code uh, and JetBrains for those IDEs that you might be using. There are also new API capabilities that are being released. So there's four new capabilities that are gonna now enable developers to uh, be used for AI agents. So a code execution tool, an MCP connector, files API, and the ability to cache prompts for up to one hour uh, to improve, yeah, that context. So really cool there. And also the pricing is gonna be remaining consistent with some of their previous Opus and Sonnet models. So Opus 4 at 15 uh, per million tokens, input output, so 1575 per million tokens, and then Sonnet 4 is at $3 and $15 uh, per million token input and output. So uh, Claude 4 is the most powerful model yet and the best coding model in the world. It leads the SWE bench at 72.5% and the terminal bench at 43.2%. One of the cool things about uh, Claude 4 here, mo the models is that even GitHub is saying that Claude Sonnet 4 is now gonna be uh, helping to power a lot of the agentic scenarios with the GitHub Copilot, which is really cool. So again, looking at the SWE bench here, some of those metrics you can see uh, with Opus 4 and Sonnet, you know, 72.5, 72.7, uh, even Sonnet 3, you know, down here, OpenAI's Codex, you know, 72.1%. So pretty close to, um, you know, these models. Now these uh, Claude 4 models are just outperforming uh, the Codex a little bit, but there's some good jumps, yeah, compared to Gemini 2.5 Pro and OpenAI's uh, models here as well. Now, in terms of the documentation for like the model overview for Opus 4 and Sonnet 4, I'm going to link this down in the video description as well. But it's got some, you know, uh, good information here, especially if you're going to be doing, you know, API calling. But Claude, yeah, has some really good um, uh, documentation on their website here uh, about, yeah, what you can get here. So talks about some of those features and uh, abilities that you have with the uh, model here. So this is the developer guide. All right, so I'm over here, yeah, in the Claude 
uh, environment. So let's go ahead and do a few prompts to test, yeah, just how the performance is for uh, Claude. So let's start with maybe some general, like, tougher kind of knowledge questions. So let's do uh, explain quantum entanglement in simple terms. So quantum entanglement is like having a pair of magical coins that are forever connected no matter how far apart they are. Imagine you have two special coins that are entangled. You flip one coin, it lands on heads. The other coin, even if it's on the other side, instantly knows how to land on tails. Pretty cool, very yeah, basic kind of breakdown uh, to make it non-technical for an answer, which is really good to see. <laughs> All right, so let's do another prompt here. Something with reasoning and logic. All right, so this one, if Sally's mother had has four children, April, May, June, what's the fourth child's name? The fourth child's name is Sally. The riddle states Sally's mother has four children, so Sally herself is one of those four children. Good, got it right away. Um, let's see, let's do a kind of math logic question. All right, so it says that the next number in the sequence is going to be 30. Pattern here is that each number is the product of two consecutive integers. So 2 is 1 times 2, 6 is 2 times 3, 12 is 3 times 4. Yeah, so got that one pretty well. Uh, write a Python function to check if a string is a palindrome. All right, so here it is, yeah, writing the code to check if that is a palindrome. So it has the Python function here, is palindrome, is palindrome simple. So it was able to, you know, write this here um, in this artifact here in Claude, which is, yeah, really cool. So let's do another one here. So I just said, write me a basic web app game that is similar to Pokemon games for the Game Boy Color. So let's see, you know, what it does uh, with its capabilities here. So it looks like it's writing all the CSS right now. All right, so now it is you know, writing the rest of the game. It's writing the script here and some of the uh, you know, game mechanics. All right, it's continuing to develop this out. Very cool to see. All right, so looks like we have the Pokemon game here. It's calling it Monster Quest. So it uh, captures that classic Game Boy Color feel. It's got the core gameplay, so overworld exploration, random encounters, turn-based combat, uh, monster collection, catch up to six monsters, and you have an inventory system. It's got a battle system, and uh, yeah, Pokemon-like elements. Hmm. Let's go ahead and see what it's like. So I guess I yeah use the arrow keys here. Interesting. Okay. Oh, a wild ice sprite appeared. Okay. So um, I'm going to go ahead and catch it. Uh oh. It hit me. I'm going to go ahead and hit an attack. Now I'm going to hit catch. Oh, I caught it. Yay. Okay. So where is my. Oh, okay, so if I click on team, it shows what I caught. Interesting. Hmm. It's got my items here. I currently have a healing potion and a super potion. That's cool. Um, a wild dragon appeared. I'm going to hit attack. I'm going to do catch. Cool, I caught that one. I'm going to run. This is pretty cool. Um, I think I'm gonna yeah do an item. Interesting. And I'm gonna catch one. Oh, oh that's not good. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Okay. Um, so it didn't automatically uh, create you know the uh, like monster of Pokemon would uh, automatically pull out some of my other. Um, you know, characters that I had, uh, my Pokemon animals, to, like, go and do the fight. So, interesting. Well, yeah, this is really cool. Just one prompt, and it was able to do this uh, level of development, creating that game. All right, let's go ahead and do a quick creative task here and see how it does with this one. 
So let's see, write a short story about a detective who can read minds, but only while sneezing. So yeah, let's see this, the sneezing detective. So we have uh, Detective Marcus Webb, uh, the most unusual superpower in the history of law enforcement. He could read minds, but only while sneezing. Wow, this is really cool. Very impressive. And it does pretty good at creative writing. I think uh, Anthropic's team did a very good job at uh, yeah, adding in some capabilities with the creative writing. But even the short story, you know, is pretty good uh, with the capabilities that you can get here. Um, all right. Well, that brings us here yeah, to close just with a few kind of quick tests here. Overall, I'm very impressed, you know, with the uh, updates and the release here with Claude 4. So Opus and uh, with Sonnet. So I highly recommend you know checking out the recent update. I'm also going to be testing out you know some of the API connections, performance on some of the deeper kind of code generation, uh, and I'll keep you guys yeah tuned in on that. Uh, thank you so much you know for tuning into this video. If you haven't already, please uh, like and smash that subscribe button so you don't miss any other upcoming videos I've got coming to the channel. If you have any questions too about AI, how to integrate that you know for your work or your business, I have an online course. I have a lot of resources, and I also you know work with a globally uh, recognized tech consulting firm to help integrate AI solutions you know into your business. So always looking to, you know, help out other people uh, in integrating and exploring AI the right way. So uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. And remember to keep moving forward, and I will catch you next time. Bye-bye.